Now, research suggests that as we reach midlife, many of us feel the urge to reinvent ourselves. We, we wanted to know what you thought, so we asked if you had the chance to reinvent yourself or to start again, would you? 85% wow. of you said yes, which is amazing. And our next guest is with that 85%. Melinda Messenger rose to fame as a glamour model in the late 90s before carving her way as a television presenter. But when she reached her 40s, she realised that the career she truly wanted was something else. Here to tell us more, please welcome Melinda Messenger. Woo! Hello! Hello, hello. Now, Melinda, obviously, you, you came into public prominence and you became famous for, you know, doing a glam modelling and all this sort of thing, but you'd had many careers throughout your life. It's not like you just went from this one to becoming a psychotherapist, which is what you are now. Yeah, no, that, that's right. So, um, well, I became uh, a model. I did the glamour modelling at 27. And then prior to that, I was um, an air hostess, a customer services manager. So I'd worked from the age of 18 and became famous at 27. And yes, so now I, in 2010, I started the process of retraining just because I knew that there was something else that I desperately wanted to do. And um, like life sort of unfolds, I was thinking, well, you know, when is this going to happen? Because I've now I've got children, you know, I've got bills to pay. Um, I was working in television continuously and there was no sign of that letting up. And I thought, well, you know, I could carry on doing what I'm doing, but how painful that would be to have that regret, to feel that there was something else that I needed mm. to do yeah. that I didn't give the chance to do. Um, so, yeah, I made the decision to, to go for it and... Um, I've been training for the last five years as a transpersonal psychotherapist. Um, and I can tell you it's the best thing I've ever done. Is it? Well, was there any kind of pushback from, you know, people around you, your family, your friends? Because obviously you were working in, in quite a, a lucrative industry. You, you know, you were doing really well. To then go in something into a direction which, uh, towards something which is rather more of a caring profession, which, whilst it's fulfilling, it's maybe not necessarily going to, you know, pay the bills and, and all that sort of thing. Because that could well be the reason that many women in particular, once they get to sort of mid life think how can I give up this which is fairly secure to do something which fulfills me how did you make that jump it's a big leap um it is a big leap because yes you're absolutely right psychologically you have all these sort of dependencies and that fear of change is is huge um and I guess really what helped me understand that process was a the, a, the process of psychotherapy in itself means that you are constantly kind of reflecting and understanding what's going on. But also I'd reached a point where I recognised that, you know, the kind of earning great money, having, you know, fabulous things, expensive things was really not meaningful to me in any way. And I wanted to be of service, um, and so that was that that kind of desire to be of service just overpowered everything else. And I thought, well, what is it that I actually need? You know, as, as long as I, I and I actually downscaled and I downscaled everything, sold everything um, and just thought, OK, if I, I, I if as long as I've got the minimum that I need to get by on, I can start this journey. And then ultimately, you know, as everything does, it, it just becomes um, self rewarding mm. because yeah. The pleasure that I get from it is, is just through the roof because it has so much meaning to me. Um, and in turn, obviously, it does provide. And it's with a to talking totally different scales. But for me, what I gain in the meaning and the purpose of the work that I do far outweighs any of the kind yeah. of financial things. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Had you had you, Melinda, because I'm fascinated. I think it's amazing to make mm. this to, to make this jump. Um, had you been somebody that was actually in therapy, you know, be, before you made the transition to being a, a therapist. Were you somebody who people had come to with their problems? Is that what gave you a, a leaning towards it? How did you know that you had a propensity towards this career? Um, I hadn't started my own therapy before training, but as part of the training, <clears throat> then we have to undergo our own process. Um, 
I think it was one of those jobs that is as far back as I can remember. I, I remember being around the age of seven and thinking I wanted to be a psychiatrist. Um, so I, I always knew that I had a calling to that kind of work. But at the time, I remember my mum saying, oh, now you'd have to go to university. You can't do that. And, and of course, at seven, you know, you take in these ideas that not everything is possible. Um, and then I guess as I kind of grew and then I challenged so many of my own scripts and so much of what was possible and suddenly found myself in a life that I'd never envisaged or been able to imagine, I suddenly realised, oh, OK, so we put a ceiling on ourselves. We, we, we kind of, we take in these ideas of what we can and can't do. And actually, is it true? And then when you start challenging those things, you notice that your life around you changes. And actually a lot of those ideas that you've kind of interjected or you've taken in as truths are actually not. Yeah. Um, but in terms of, yes, I probably was always the person that people would come to to talk about issues and things. Um, Probably because I'm naturally, you know, quite empathic. Um, Amazing. But yeah, it's it's amazing. it's that's amazing. Um, it, it, reinvention is such a difficult thing to do, especially if somebody has seen you in one way and then you're trying to help people to see you in another in terms of what you're doing in your study. I mean, for myself, I know I know exactly what that's like coming from a band, coming from the band Eternal and then moving forward and trying to become an actress it can be quite difficult to kind of, um, if people have pigeonholed you in a certain place. Do you find that you've had any sort of maybe backlash against that and the changes that you're trying to make? Not really. Well, yeah, yes and no. So I think a lot of that is an internal struggle, isn't it? Because you're... It, you can you can feel trapped by other people's ideas of you. So if people hold you in a certain frame of mind and think this is you and this is all you are, then that can be an internal struggle as you kind of fight against that. But if you know that that's just a perception and not a truth, um, then it's still a challenge to to kind of not be held back by that. But you can st still keep going forward and. I look at it less as reinvention, which sort of sounds more like an idea that you've come up with, oh, tomorrow I'm going to be this, as, uh, and it, as opposed to it's more of like a natural progression and natural development. If you're following, you know, your kind of own calling or yeah. you're following who you really are, um, that will all unfold. And yeah, people will have ideas and it's yeah. not, it, the, the challenge is, is not to let that stop you. Yeah, but do you know, Melinda, you. I, I really wish we had more time. I'm going to have to go now because we could talk about this all day. <laughs> I think it's something we, we're all of a certain age and absolutely, totally understand what you're, what you're talking about. And I think so many women at home as well watching will, will understand it. Hopefully we'll get you back on another day and we can talk about it again because it's been absolutely fascinating. Uh, have oh, a lovely rest of the day, Melinda. Thank you so much for joining Bye. us. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>